In this video, we're going to remodel the vessel by Heberwick Studio. As we can see here, there are staircases moving upward in a hexagonal pattern over some open parabolic forms. We'll use some tricks to create this hexagonal structure. You don't need any plugins to follow along, and I'll ensure you can see every component I use so you can copy and follow along with me. Let's get started. All right, first, we'll create levels using a series component. I'll set the step to 1.2 and the count to 18. This gives us a series of numbers with a 1.2 meter difference, representing a total of 18 floors. Next, I'll turn these into unit Z vectors and use the XY plane component to create planes at each level. On these planes, we'll create our base forms. To do this, I'll search for a polygon component set the plane to our generated planes, and this will create a polygon on top of each one. This allows us to control the number of segments and the radius. Next, we'll transform these polygons into an upward parabolic shape similar to our project. We'll use a graph mapper for this. The default input for graph mapper is between zero and one, so we'll need to remap the series values we generated earlier to fit this range. We'll use remap numbers, extracting the source domain with a bounds component. Now, let's search for a graph mapper and set our remapped values to it. We'll remap again by selecting our previous setup, holding Alt and dragging down to make a copy. Connect the new remapped value to our radius, creating an upward cone-like structure. We can control the minimum and maximum radius using the target domain setting the start to 2 meters and the end to 11 meters. Now, by right-clicking on the graph mapper, choose Bezier Curve. By adjusting the handle, we can control the curvature. Now that we've created our base forms, let's clean up our workspace. I'll select everything and press Ctrl plus G to group them. Let's rename this group to Base Forms to keep things organized. Now, we're going to apply this hexagonal like structure onto our parabolic form. Let's say these are our curves at each level. From two consecutive curves, we create a weave like structure between them. We then separate the odd and even branches, flipping the odd branches vertically, which forms our hexagonal structure. Now, let's apply this in our project. The first thing we need to do is group two consecutive curves. We'll group index numbers 0 and 1 in one group, 1 and 2 in another, and so forth. To do this in Grasshopper, we'll use the sublist component and connect our polygons to it. For the domains, we'll use the consecutive domain component. To get the index of each curve, we'll use the item index component connecting the polygons to both wists and items. This gives us the index of each polygon, which we'll plug into N on consecutive domain. Right-click on Additive and select Invert. Now, our output is a domain of 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and so forth. Plugging this into sublist places each pair of curves into a group. With pair and viewer, we can see each group now has two items, meaning we've successfully grouped two consecutive curves. Now, our pattern will be created from the first and second curves. To isolate these two items, I'll use the list item component. Zoom in until you see the plus and minus icons and press plus to add an extra output. Now, I'll explode both sets of curves to get each segment separately. Before weaving them together, I'll use the Dispatch component to select one step at a time, selecting the first item, leaving the second, and so forth. I'll copy this over and assign it to the second set as well. To weave them back, I'll use the Weave component. From the first set, I'll select the A input, and from the second set, I'll select the B input. Once we breathe them, 
I'll reconnect the curves using the Connect Curves component. I'll directly connect our woven curves into it. And for the connection type, I'll choose Position. This gives us a straight polyline. If you look at the result, it's nearly a perfect 90 degree turn. To introduce some angles and control the curve inclination, I'll scale each segment to create an inclined structure, using the midpoint of each curve as the center of scaling. With the factor input, I'll control the scaling amount, setting it to around 0.7. This gives us an inclined curve. To create our hexagonal pattern, we need one final step, reversing one segment at a time. To reverse it, remember how we previously grouped two curves at a time? By reversing that order, we effectively flip the necessary curves. Now, if we go back to our sublist component, we see two items. I want to reverse only the even branches, or you could choose the odd ones. To separate them, I'll use the split tree component. I'll connect our sublist result to split tree. For the splitting mask, I'll define even or odd branches. I'll write this in a panel. Open curly bracket, type 0, 2, and a question mark in the square brackets. This selects even branches in the positive output and odd branches in the negative output. After splitting, we'll combine them back together using combine data. I'll reconnect this. Initially, you won't notice any change. However, if I go to one of the outputs, right-click and press reverse, you'll see the hexagonal pattern emerge. Now, we'll convert this curve into a geometry, like a surface. Then, on top of that, we'll create our stairs to create both inward and outward offsets. I'll use the merge component, adding a positive value for the first offset and a negative value for the second. We want to ultimate the offsets, the first set outward, the second inward, and so on. I'll use the repeat data component. For the lengths, I'll use list length to count the previous curves, flattening it to count everything as one. The repeated values will match the data structure and serve as our offset distances. Now, with the original unmodified curve to the offset one, we can create surfaces. I'll merge the original curve with the offset one, simplifying the inputs to ensure we have two items in each branch. After we have two items in each branch, we pass these directly to the loft component. This gives us a surface between the two curves. Next, let's clean up by selecting everything and grouping it. One thing left for to mention, the offsetting plane, which could cause issues later. I'll change it to XY plane. Let's rename this group to Ultimating In-Out Offsets. The next step is to give thickness to our surfaces. I'll use the Join Brep component. I'll flatten the input so everything joins into one. Then, I'll use the Extrude component to add thickness in the Z direction. I'll give it a negative value around minus 0.12. Now we have our thickness working here. I'm going to move it over and group it, renaming it to Thickness plus Preview. The next step is creating a stair on these inclined planes. First, let's isolate the inclined surfaces from the flat areas. To do this, we'll deconstruct all the breps to get each surface separately. So, I'm going to use the dispatch component to separate those. For the pattern, we're going to use Ease Planner. This gives us a flag output indicating whether the surface is planar or non-planar. The inclined areas you see are unlikely to be planar because they're not made of two parallel curves. So, I'm going to use this directly as our pattern. If I check by connecting the surface into the A output, we get flat areas, which will be our landing. And if I check the B output, it will be the inclined areas. 
Next, I'll isolate all these inclined areas from the preview. To do this, I'll simply select the surfaces, use Ctrl plus Shift I to invert the selection, and then preview off everything else. On these inclined surfaces, we're going to create contour-like gaps that will form our stits later on. I'll use the ISO trim component for this. For the division, I'll use Divide Domain 2. I set the U to 1 and the V to around 12. Now, from this surface division, I'm going to extract only the curves. I'll explode the curves again, which gives me all the boundary curves. What I want from this is the top and bottom curves from each surface. To do this, we'll sort them based on their Z differences. I'll find the curve midpoints and use a sort list component. For the sorting key, I'll use deconstruct and take the Z component as the sorting key. Now the list we're going to sort will be the curves. I'll connect the curves to the A input. This gives us a list sorted based on their height. From this list, I'll select the first and last items. So, I'll input index numbers 0 and negative 1. This means I'll select the first and last items from the sorted list. Once we've selected the first and last items, I'll separate them into different outputs using the list item component. Then, I'll move one of them in the Z direction with the move component and a Z vector. The amount we move them in the Z direction is based on the riser differences, which we calculate from the sorted Z values. We'll find the difference between these two values using subtraction. If the result is negative, I'll use absolute value to turn it positive. This gives us the riser difference which we'll use directly as our Z vector. Now we have three curves, the top part, the bottom, and the curve that we moved based on the riser. I'll merge all three, the first one into data one, the second one into data two, and the moved one into data three. Once I merge them, I'll create a loft. I'll use loft and connect all the merged results into it. But here, I'm seeing a problem saying loft could not be constructed. This error occurs because I missed connecting one curve twice. So I'll replace it with the second curve here. This should take care of the error. Now, in the loft options, right click and choose loft options. Then I'll check closed loft and set the style to straight and commit changes. This gives me a straight loft result with closed ends. However, one of the curves is flipped, causing some weird crossing over. I'll connect one of the curves and replace it with the flipped curve. This fixes the problem. Now we can see what we expected. I'll cap them to close all the holes and give a custom preview to visualize. Sometimes custom preview won't work if you have another custom preview disabled. I think this is a bug. So, I'll enable preview for the previous one. Now we can see our stairs applied on each inclined plane. Now, if we take a look at the previous inclined surfaces, and these stairs are based on little segments, which will eventually cause crossing over. To fix this, I'll use our previous thickness setup after isotrim, replacing the previous thickness. This will fix the problem. Next, we're going to create a railing over those borders. I'll go back to our previous BREP join component and extract the naked edges using the BREP edges component. This gives us the naked curves. I'll take all these naked curves and extrude them in the Z direction, about 0.8 meters. Then I'll give it a custom preview with a glossy look and a dark color. That's it for this tutorial. I added detailing and railings that you could simply add. Also, I included a gap in each landing so the railing won't intersect. It's a simple addition. 
The final project file and the Grasshopper script will be available on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next one.